Welcome to another edition of our Cross Chat. I'm here with our staff minister, Russell Briggle. I'm Pastor Tim Henning, Hope Lutheran Church. And uh, we, we are today going to move forward and talk about Thanksgiving because obviously we only want to give thanks one day a week. Absolutely. One absolutely. day a year, not every day. But uh, and, and when we get done, if you want to go up and ask us some questions or, or share some comments, we'd love to hear from you. You can get that at, uh, you can get my email, pastor at hopegenovalley.com. You can get it off this website as well. So here we go. Here we go. Today, as Pastor said, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving, but not necessarily the holidays we commonly think of and celebrate here on the North American continent. I believe that we're all familiar with the traditional story of how Thanksgiving came to be in America. Yeah. We've been taught from a very early age uh, about those who became known as the pilgrims coming over on the Mayflower, uh, coming to America on the Mayflower where they could practice their religion freely, mm -hmm. coming to the New World in 1620. We know that they landed on Plymouth Rock where they survived a really brutal first winter there. It's terrible. Yeah. And uh, we remember that they were, they received an astonishing visit from a uh, Native American named Abenaki who actually greeted them. So we remember that in the harvest season of 1621, Governor William Bradford organized a celebratory feast and invited a group of the fledgling colony's Native American allies, now remembered as America's first Thanksgiving, but certainly they didn't use that term. No, but they did give thanks that they survived a lot, of, a lot of trouble that winter. And, you know, in, in the United States, we have a different day for Thanksgiving than mm -hmm. like Canada or other places in right. the world. But um, how, how it got put on thanks, uh, how, the, how it got put on a Thursday in November, that's kind of interesting mm -hmm. too. Uh, in 1863, right. do I get the date right? Yeah. 1863. Right at the, at the height of the Civil War, right. uh, war between the states, we should say that, right? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln issued a decree in treating all Americans to uh, ask God mm -hmm. uh, and uh, to commend his, their tender care into his hands. And, and that became a, uh, for a number of years, that became a Thanksgiving reminder right. that even when orphans and widows were uh, made through the war mm -hmm. in both North and South that they needed God to help them heal the wounds. And so Thanksgiving for his blessings. And, and so it stayed on the last uh, Thursday of, of November all the way up to 1939. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you were sharing a little bit about Thanksgiving there with Franklin <laughs> Roosevelt, uh, adjusting the date, the Thursday, so that they could make sales uh, before Christmas. Right. But in 1941, uh, there was a decree by Congress, I think it came from Franklin Roosevelt as well, the president, that would always be on the fourth Thursday of November. And that's what stuck even to this day. I think next week is the fourth Sunday. Yes, Sunday, Thursday. Thursday, yes. I'm all messed <laughs> up. There's so much going on to be thankful for. <laughs> so Miriam Webster <clears throat> defines Thanksgiving as a public acknowledgement or celebration of divine goodness. Uh, an act of giving thanks or prayer expressing gratitude. But we wish to talk about what Thanksgiving really is, and that is giving thanks to our God for his mercy, for his grace, and his bountiful blessings. So with that in mind, let's let's begin, shall we, Pastor? What, what is Thanksgiving? Well, that's easy. Giving thanks. Giving thanks. Thanksgiving. It's thanking, from our perspective as Christians, it's thanking God for all that he has done for us mm -hmm. and everything he's provided for us from life itself to eternal life through Jesus Christ by providing a savior. If we have that blessing, I suppose, I suppose we have every blessing we need, Absolutely. but he still gives us even more blessings than that. Uh, we can think of many times scripturally when mm -hmm. uh, people gave thanks after a big event, for right. instance, uh, like uh, the Exodus about mm -hmm. 3,500 years ago, Miriam uh, sings a song of thanksgiving that mm -hmm. God uh, uh, allowed them to get through the Red Sea and, and uh, not be killed by the, the Egyptians back then. Absolutely. And, and uh, perhaps you'll remember the, 
a verse out of that, the Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation, uh, shows up in the Psalms too. Yeah. He is my God and I will praise him, my Father's God and I will exalt him. That lifting up of God because of his blessings Amen. is really important for us. It's probably one of the oldest songs that survives uh, in the scripture, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. So we also, as believers, give thanks to God, even in the face of, un, of the unknown, which in this year has been really evident, hasn't well, it? Yeah, it sure is. And I, I think that's why when we talked earlier about Abraham Lincoln during the height of the Civil War and Franklin Roosevelt, even as the country's mm -hmm. trying to come out of depression, then in the middle of, of uh, a world war, how that's important. But if we put that on our spiritual uh, battlefield, so to speak. That's every day, but there are times where in life we are, we just don't know what's going to happen, and we just praise God for His for this in times of uncertainty, because we know and trust that He's going to do it. We think of Mary, you know, she's uh, told by the angel Gabriel, we're going to get to that in a couple of weeks when we get to Advent, that's right, uh, and Christmas time, but um, when when we think about Mary being told that she's going to have a child and she has not had sex with anybody, mm -hmm. but the community's not going to, yeah, right. Yeah, you know, you're exactly. Pregnant. Yeah, and, and in the midst of that, she offers up her great song of praise, come down to us in the Latin, mm -hmm. Magnificent, where she praises God and thanks him for the blessing of a Savior that, and for the privilege to be the mother of the Savior. That is really something. Amen. Yeah, you can read that in Luke uh, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. So, and, and we're also supposed to give thanks to God even in situations of sadness and weariness. Is that, is that right? <laughs> Especially, I think, yeah. in times like that. Over and over again in the Psalms, we, we uh, see the psalmist thanking God, even though it's a tough time mm -hmm. uh, for them. Uh, sometimes the enemies at the gates, you know, so to speak. Right. Sometimes somebody died sometimes it's just a tough time in life uh, which maybe i guess our lives are filled with all of those absolutely now yeah. so um you talk about job and his and his oh, prayer yeah. too yeah job is a good one to yeah. talk about because job had everything and and this this uh, big contest between job and god mm -hmm. takes place and job says you know, the only reason he's happy and thankful to you is because you've given him everything. That's right. I'll bet if you take that away, he's not, he's going to curse you and That's die. That's right. Well, that doesn't happen, does it? Um, no. You know, Job actually loses his kids mm -hmm. and their families. He loses all of his wealth. And, and then he loses his health. The only thing he did lose was his wife, and she kept nagging him to just <laughs> yeah. give up. Exactly. And, and in all of that, Job says... Naked I came into this world, and it is certain that naked I'm going to depart. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. May the name of the Lord God be praised. And he's also the one that in the height of his suffering says, I know my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. Yeah. So Job uh, had a good perspective. He had a big picture view of mm -hmm. life. And when we get into these times of trouble, suffering, uncertainty, like we're living in now, civil unrest, yeah. whatever you want to say, um, it's easy to get tunnel vision, and when we do that, we forget the big picture, which has is filled with blessings from God. Absolutely. It's very powerful, especially in these times, like you said. And we're even supposed to give thanks even when we don't feel like it. How is that possible? <laughs> well, with God's help, of course, and by faith we do that. Um, I know that sometimes... We offer our prayers, Lord, deliver us from whatever the, mm -hmm. the situation. And the fact is, sometimes it feels like God is distant mm -hmm. from us, that he isn't listening. But that's when we turn to what the scripture says. The, the Lord says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. He promises to hear us and to answer according to his will. So he always knows what's best. So yeah. trust has to be involved too. Yeah, and, and that's really how come you can give thanks to God, even at the death of a spouse, thanking God for the life. That doesn't mean we're not sad or that we don't miss the person. That's right. But boy, we have thanksgiving for the life that God allowed me to share with that person. And, and that's just one of many examples we could use. Absolutely. Giving thanks to God is especially needed in our current circumstances when everything just oh really God. seems to be upside down and, and so twisted with the pandemic and the political polarization the neglect of God and, and, and what he desires for us uh, on a whole. So 
Yeah, it, it just, there are times when life just doesn't seem like a, a season for gratitude. Maybe you have a chronic illness that always pops up. Maybe you're caring for an elderly parent or a special needs child that just puts a lot of strain on you. Right. Uh, thankfulness for even these circumstances, even when each day brings these fresh challenges, helps us to find hope and meaning. Mm -hmm. And if you read uh, through the Apostle Paul's letters, all 13 of them, you'll, you'll see how often Paul offers thanks for one thing or another, even his own suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, you think of uh, writing to the Romans, this is chapter 5, he says, not only this, but we also rejoice confidently in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces patient endurance. Patient endurance produces a tested character and a tested character produces hope. And hope will not put us to shame because God has been poured out into our hearts by his Holy Spirit who he has given us. Now, did you catch all of the blessings that were Absolutely. listed in there and the process that God uses to strengthen us? Or Paul writing from prison, as he writes the, to the Philippians, uh, he, he rejoices in his situation because he knows his Savior. So it doesn't matter. That's right. Nothing matters when it comes to that. That's right. And, uh, and <clears throat> just as an advertisement for our Advent oh, yeah. coming up in our Christmas, that's the theme, hope has arrived. And, and we need to tell you, those out there that hope is not like a wishful thinking. It, yeah. It's actually a surety that hasn't been, uh, that hasn't been actually experienced yet. Right. That right, that's right. It hasn't been realized yeah. yet. Um, Thanksgiving next week, we're going to put it in the context of our times, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you could join us for our live stream, which will be, I think, at 6.30 mm -hmm. on Wednesday evening, or you can watch it uh, archived uh, for a couple of weeks. It'll be up. But you also, if, you, if you're in the area and want to stop by, we actually do have live service uh, Wednesday night at 6.30, and, and you're right, then we go into the Advent season. We're going to do a whole series on Advent coming up here on Cross Chats. That's right. uh, we'll take next week off. Yes, we will. Uh, so we can spend time thanking, uh, <laughs> but there's extra things, so we're going to take it off next yes. week. But then we'll be back in two weeks, and in our Advent theme is going to be the greatest gift and the greatest gift is Jesus Christ and, and the blessings that come through him. If we have that, then we have to be filled with thanksgiving That's because right. then even death can't separate us from the love of God That's in correct. Christ Jesus our Lord. That's correct. And we also want to give thanks to those that serve in our community uh, as well, correct? Well, I think we should, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, showing gratitude to God for the blessing of the protection our, our police officers give. And yeah, we know they're not perfect. Uh, some of them sometimes make mistakes, but by and large, we can be feel very safe right. uh, to thank God for the blessing of firefighters who mm -hmm. protect our communities and for the first responders, for nurses, doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of people out there that we rely on. They're all gifts of God, and we should be thankful for them and not always be so critical and, and condemning and condescending, I think. That's right. So are there still others that we give thanks to God for? Well, I would hope so. <laughs> you know, I, I think uh, we should give thanks for things like our parents and grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, in my case, the Lord's taken them home already to heaven. But yes. uh, still, uh, I think about them quite often, about the lessons they taught that have brought me to almost Medicare age. <laughs> I can even thank God for that, too, because I'm still yeah. breathing. Yes. Um, and, and for pastors and teachers oh. along the way, Sunday school teachers, uh, for Christian friends, uh, and for the opportunity to live for Christ and also to share the message of salvation with others. Yeah. So I think that because of God's grace given us in Jesus Christ, we have uh, a lot to be thankful for, a lot of people for whom to be thankful, but also for our own lives and how God, through all the good days, bad days, tough times, easy times, has built us into being his person uh, so that we can function in a world that's uh, really going to hell in a handbasket yes. in a lot of ways. It really is. So um, we want to thank our God also for the ability, despite what seems to be happening in this day yeah. and age, to come together as one body. Uh, to worship on Sunday morning. So whether that's in person or virtually via our live stream worship. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the community of believers is important. Uh, 
God puts us in the body of Christ by faith in Jesus so that we can function. Mm -hmm. A body that's missing an arm might function, but not as well as having two arms that's right. or two legs, that sort of thing. And that's the way it is in the body of the church. Being thankful for brothers and sisters in Christ is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And the more people that go, that doesn't mean you get fat. You know, like the more you eat <laughs> yeah. in your body, the more people that come into the body of Christ. Uh, the, the more encouragement we have and the strength to move through bad times. So Thanksgiving is important as we remember these things. Thank God for his good. Absolutely, he is. Now, we don't uh, really have a prayer to close out this cross chat, but I would like to uh, do a call and response uh, from select verses of Psalm 136. Well, so, that is a psalm for giving thanks. Isn't yes, it, it is. Yeah. It is. So I'll, I'll do the call and pass. So our prayer is going to be one written in the scriptures. That's good. right. That's good. right. So give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. He remembered us in our lowest state. His love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. He gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. And that is really the basis Absolutely. of our thanksgiving. The Lord's love endures forever. Even when our love wanes and the world doesn't have it, right. uh, we still have the love of God, his forgiveness, our lives, eternal life. And then all the other best things around that. Sure. Uh, we have so much to be thankful for every single day. We well, that's going to be it for this particular cross chat. Mm -hmm. uh, remember, you can catch our Tuesday, Wednesday Bible class. It's recorded and we put it up online somewhere around noon on Wednesday. Uh, cross chat, like I said, next week we won't be at it. Uh, but two weeks we'll be back with uh, talking about what Advent's all about. A lot yes. of people don't know that's an old word meaning coming, but mm -hmm. that's kind of a commercial here. And you can get us on Sunday mornings, our live streams on at nine o'clock in the morning. Again, that's archived, or you can uh, worship with us in person at nine o'clock where we require masks yes. to be worn by everyone, or 10.30 where the masks are still optional at this time. Yeah. Uh, we don't know all, everything's in fluidity right now. So exactly. So I guess until uh, two weeks from today, we will bid you uh, God's blessings, especially God's richest blessings, as you and your family celebrate Thanksgiving and bless you, and we'll see you then. Give thanks to the Lord, everyone. He is good.